What are you doing? Stop! No! Hey guys, it's Gabriella and welcome back to another scary text message story. Today, we're going to be playing another episode of Dark Matter. If you have not seen the other episodes in this series or think you might be behind, you click the I right up there or the link is down below in that first comment. Oh my goodness, so much has happened. We are literally about to go back in time and try to save my best friend from dying in this like earthquake, but it wasn't really an earthquake. It was like caused by like, oh, like a wormhole or something. I have no idea. So before we jump into all the crazy drama, if you are new here, welcome to my channel. I post awesome videos all throughout the week and we're just one big amazing family here and I'd love for you to be a part of it so make sure you subscribe okay well, let's see what's gonna happen. I'm literally so nervous. Okay, Sam set the dial to the exact time in history you would like to visit and press go Taz looks at herself through the filter anxiously the time dial floats on the screen beneath her face with a shaking finger Taz turns the dial back and takes a deep breath and presses go suddenly the air in front of her seems to rip open before her eyes Simply step through the wormhole to begin your journey. Your mission is to change the past without altering the future. Good luck, Tazneem. Taz takes a deep breath and steps through the hole. Her vision blurs and everything goes dark. A few moments later, Taz slowly opens her eyes and finds herself on the floor of her dorm room. She picks herself up and rubs her head. It's pounding. A door opens. A guy enters. Taz screams. He screams. What are you doing here? Who are you? Guy. Who are you? This is my room. No, it's not. And please, put something on. I can wear whatever I want in my own room. Are you feeling okay? Please don't throw up on my carpet. I am perfectly fine, thank you. This is my room, okay? 3E. Right. I live in 3E. What is happening? This isn't funny, I... Taz looks around the room. Everything is different. Her artwork has been replaced with posters of Duran Duran and Bon Jovi. A clunky ancient PC sits where her laptop once was. Oh no, did she go too far back in time? The clock hangs on the wall and the time reads 12.30. A Ghostbusters calendar is taped below it. Where's all my stuff? My laptop. Laptop? And my sister's artwork. I don't have time for this. I'm running late for class. Leave now or I'm gonna call the cops. No, wait, please. I'm, I'm just confused. Taz crosses over to the calendar on the wall. It's turned to the page for October. 1989. Taz gasps. What year is it? Um, you're looking right at the calendar. It's 1989. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh! I went too far back! Huh? Sam said it was risky, but I didn't listen! How am I gonna say to Eric when I'm stuck in 1989? Stuck? I'm gonna call and get you some help. He takes his phone off the wall and starts to dial 911, but Taz smacks the phone out of his hands. Hey, I'm trying to help you! Look, I know this is all crazy and I am sorry, but I need you not to tell anyone about this. I'm just lost. I was looking for my friend. I was trying to help him and I think I screwed things up even worse. So please. The guy's expression softens when her voice breaks. He nods. What can I do to help? Um, maybe put some clothes on. <laughs> right. No, wait. I think I know what I need to do. Do you know someone named Dr. Montgomery? The guy's eyes spark. The physics professor? Yes, exactly. I know her very well, actually. Here. He scribbles down an address for Taz on a slip of paper. Great, thank you. Wait! He tries to chase after her, but Taz is gone. Wait, why? Oh my gosh, okay, wait, we're like, literally stuck at the wrong year? Oh my gosh. Taz slips quietly into the same lecture hall that was destroyed by the earthquake, only it's still standing. The hall is still full of bored students, but no one is distracted by a cell phone. Students turn and stare as Taz finds a seat in the back of the classroom. Her outfit stands out like a sore thumb among the 80s fashion. At the front of the room is a small but powerful woman in a suit and glasses, Dr. Montgomery. And if you were able to harness a high quantity of dark matter, you could theoretically open a wormhole and travel through time. The classroom erupts in muffled chatter. That's all the time we have for today. Please read chapter 12 before class next week. As students begin to file the room, Taz approaches Dr. Montgomery. What am I gonna say? Like, hi, I'm from the future? Dr. Montgomery, I need your help. I, Taz steals herself. There was a wormhole in the future and it caused an earthquake. It killed my friend Eric. So I traveled back through time. You do understand that I've devoted years of research to wormholes. Excuse me? 
I don't appreciate you mocking me. I'm not, I need to help Eric. Like literally Taz, like this is your plan is just to come at her like this? Like, oh, oh, what? <laughs> Dr. Montgomery takes in Taz's clothes. Her eyes narrow and she opens her mouth as if to say something. But then a handsome man enters the lecture hall. When he turns, Taz recognizes him. It was the guy from the dorm. Only now he's dressed, quite well actually, in a suit and tie. And something about him seems strangely familiar to Taz. How was class, professor? Another great discussion. Can you please help this young woman? Dr. Montgomery turns to Taz. My assistant Lionel can answer whatever questions you may have. Dr. Montgomery slips a few papers into her briefcase, and then tucking it under her arm, she leaves the room. Taz turns back to the guy. I don't know how to say this, so I'm just gonna say it. I'm Taz named Sai, I go by Taz. I'm from the future, 2018. Lionel stares at her blankly. In the future, Professor Montgomery goes missing, and her assistant, Sam, keeps her lab going. It's called the PSI lab. Sam recruits me to join the lab because I have special powers, but then something terrible happens. There's an earthquake and my friend Eric gets trapped under the rubble and dies, so Sam gave me a filter to go back through the wormhole and travel back in time, but then stupidly I set the dial too far back, and now I'm stuck here in 1989. That's why I need Dr. Montgomery's help! I have to find my way back to the future, or Eric will stay dead forever! Okay, wow, that is a lot to process. But first of all, it's a pleasure for me to formally meet you. I'm Lionel Rex. Taz jaw drops. Lionel Rex? That's why he looked familiar in this suit and tie. Dr. Rex. <gasps> the same man who had just last week kidnapped Taz and turned Lacey Owens into dark matter using a giant satellite dish. But right now, he's young with a smile that can melt hearts. Dr. Rex. Rex seems to blush under Taz's intense gaze. Oh, I'm not a doctor yet, it's just Rex. But listen, I believe you. You said you have powers? Taz eyes him wearily. In the future, we call my powers the touch. I can control dark matter, and I can see it with a special filter. Filter? Taz holds out her smashed phone. I can see ghosts with my phone. It's pretty broken right now. Rex touches Taz's phone in awe. Remarkable. This is, this is astounding. I've dreamt of this kind of technology, but never imagined it so small. You said this was some kind of telephone? Yeah, a smartphone. It goes on the internet. The internet? <laughs> yeah, it's this whole thing. This is amazing. You're exactly what, I mean, who I need for my research. Yeah, if you call killing people research. <laughs> what? Rex is obviously caught off guard. Uh, I think you must have me mistaken for somebody else. I study physics, wormholes are my focus area. And what you're telling me about dark matter, this could lead to a huge breakthrough. Together we may have what we need to open the first man-made wormhole. Wormholes are dangerous. They need not be if used properly. I want to open wormholes to help people. I want to change the course of history, stop wars from happening, stop people from dying senselessly. And right now, I want to help you get back to 2018 and save your friend. Taz locks eyes with Rex. Though he may be evil someday, right now he seems genuinely concerned for her. And she doesn't have much of a choice. Okay. Okay, but like Taz, okay Taz, hi, hi. This is exactly what Sam said not to do. He said change the past without altering the future. Dr. Rex can't know like firsthand what happens in the future. You were like, oh. Like if anything, why would I trust him? Why would I not be like, I need to talk to Dr. Montgomery. I don't care about you and your little projects you have going on, buddy. <gasps> Let's do this. Excellent. Meet me up by the dish at 4 p.m. It's a large satellite. Yeah, 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 we know the dishes. <laughs> Unfortunately, I know exactly where it is. Great. And Taz, I'll get you back home. I promise. One hour later. I mean, is he really going to do this? Because I feel like he has alternate motives. <laughs> Taz stands by the dish waiting for Rex. It's a crisp fall day. Taz watches as a young couple laughs together on the grass under a giant redwood tree. She misses Eric. There you are. Sorry I'm late. Come on, let's get started. Taz hesitates but she decides to follow Rex. He leads her into the dish's control room, beaming with excitement as he points to a small TV monitor on the wall. I built a device that measures the amount of dark matter in the area. Rex fiddles with a few knobs and dials. As you can see, there is very little dark matter surrounding us right now. Taz frowns. That's weird. In the future, the dish is surrounded by dark matter. Really? Fascinating. Let me check. Taz opens Snapchat on her phone. 
The quality is grainy, but Taz sees her dark matter meter pop up on her screen. She points her phone at the window outside, and it shows her the same thing as the TV monitor on the wall. Taz looks up puzzled. You're right. She snaps a picture and shows it to Rex. Rex nods. Indeed, not nearly enough dark matter to open a wormhole. But Rex doesn't seem deterred. He looks at Taz meaningfully. He flips a switch on the control panel and a familiar hum grows in Taz's ears. Her heart skips a beat. I've been collecting dark matter using the power of the dish for the past four years. However, the process is quite slow. With your powers, Masai, perhaps you could help speed things along. Rex points to the control panels and looks at Taz inquiringly. Will you give it a try? It may be the only way to save your friend. Taz had spins. She recalls what the future Rex told her last week. The only way to collect a lot of dark matter is to convert living matter. In other words, she would have to blast a living being with a beam from the dish and turn them into dark matter forever. Rex told her that Taz had already helped him once before. Is this what he meant? <laughs> what? So like, did I, did I literally kill someone here and then like Rex remembers me from like the future from when I came back to him in the past? Like did I already alter the future and that's what became like the past? Like this hurts my head. <gasps> Taz looks at her phone. Through the cracked screen, she sees her background picture. Taz and Eric and her dead sister Jazz goofing off together. She misses them both so badly. She has to get back to the future so she can save Eric. She walks towards the control panel and looks through the window up at the dish. A large eerie satellite dish looming over the rolling Stanford Hills. Taz turns the dial and watches as the dish rotates slowly towards the young couple in the distance. <gasps> beneath the large redwood tree. Taz points the dish beam directly at them. She looks up at Rex, who gasps as realization dawns. Wait, what are you doing? Taz turns the dial and a loud hum erupts in her head. Stop! No, Taz! No! The beam shoots out from the dish, traveling straight towards the kids and couple, and hits the giant redwood tree from behind them. tree vanishes. Rex looks at the green TV monitor on the wall. A smile spreads across his face. The area is now teeming with dark matter. Oh my gosh, I thought she was going to kill them. Oh, that was so stressful. Oh my goodness, okay. Woo, <laughs> remarkable. How did you do it? Taz sighs, realizing she's giving Rex the insight that will endanger Lacey's life in the future. You need living matter to create dark matter. That's why I converted the tree. You really are incredible. We now have the dark matter we need to open a wormhole. Come. Rex turns outside the control booth and Taz follows behind dejectedly. He pulls a gun out of his coat pocket. What the heck? Taz gasps. Don't worry, it's not that kind of gun. It's a dark matter concentrator. Okay, I was like, what is happening? It'll direct the dark matter in the area to one spot and theoretically, Open a wormhole. Oh my gosh, okay. I have no idea if I'm gonna make it home or what is happening, if I'm gonna be stuck in 1989 forever, or if I'm gonna be able to get Eric back, or if I'm gonna go back to 2018 in time to save Eric, or like what's gonna happen. I have no idea. If you have any theories, let me know down below in the comments. But until then, make sure you subscribe and turn on those notifications so you know as soon as the next video is up. But until then, you can watch the awesome videos on the screen to keep yourself entertained, and I'll see you guys later for a brand new video. Bye!